Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Hindustani's unique trade building, the Caravanserai or the Caravansary, depending on your pronunciation. This is a very interesting building with two large benefits to your team's trade routes, making them, as we'll see, functionally unraidable, as well as significantly more efficient. It does that in two ways. First, it heals trade carts that pass by it, and it also speeds them up, meaning they generate extra gold over time. How much extra gold? Well, let's check it out. To start with the basics, it costs 175 wood, similar to a market and many other buildings, but also features a 50 stone cost. That stone cost is the tricky part, as you're paying one resource that's in short supply on the map for more trade income, which by definition, if you're trading, is already an infinite resource. It's a reasonably hardy building with 2700 HP compared to say an archery range, which has 2100. It's also, of course, an Imperial Age only building, not that you'd be doing a lot of trading before Imperial Age anyway. A last note is they also take 60 seconds to build, which is a bit on the longer side, but is also just a one-time inconvenience. If we turn on the range indicator, you can see its reach is actually a square and not a circle, and is 20 by 20 tiles. Taking the building's size into account, that means the ideal distance between two caravanseries to keep perfect coverage is 16 tiles between them. On a map for a 2v2 game, for example, that would take around 8 caravanseries to cover a good trade route. Or in a 4v4 game, you'd need 10 to 12 just to give a rough sense, assuming your trade route spans about the side length of the map. Now first, just to get it out of the way, let's talk about its healing ability. The healing rate is just simply 1 HP per second, with trade carts having 70 HP in total. Each time a trade cart passes a caravansary, you can expect to heal 11 HP or up to 15 HP if going across diagonally. That means with even just 3 along any trade route, you're easily getting a full heal for each trade cart per journey. In this case, that effect even stacks, with multiple at once independently contributing their healing rates. Though outside of this, overlapping them doesn't give an advantage, and you generally want to space them out and prevent as much overlap as possible. The second, and I would argue main effect that we'll be spending most of our time on here, is that it increases trade cart's movement speed by 20%. Again, this does not stack if you have a cart in the influence zone of multiple caravanseries at once, or they would eventually start teleporting around. Now, a 20% speed boost might not sound huge, but it means trade carts actually outrun even Cumin Hazars. So with a fully covered trade route, only ranged units are a serious threat to your trade line. Even better is the bonus applies to your allies as well, and the American Civilization's trade units are comically able to outrun any cavalry unit in the game, while also carrying a cart full of gold. This is what peak fitness looks like. Of course, now we come to the question of how much extra gold income are we getting from that extra speed boost? Pretty simply, if the whole trade route is covered, then it would just be 20% more than usual. I don't see any reason to think that pathing would be impacted by the faster movement, and from the trade cart's perspective, the game is just being sped up for them by 20%, so they're just doing their whole route 20% faster. Now, I'm sure most players are aware that you get better gold returns per minute on longer routes, encouraging players to take the extra risk of planning and defending a longer distance. To quickly refresh how it all works, a trade route length as a percent of the side of the map always gives a consistent amount of gold income over time. Basically, that means a trade route spanning 100% of the length of the side of a tiny map gives roughly the same gold per minute as a route spanning the entire length of the side of a giant map. Obviously, the gold per trip is much larger on a bigger map, but a clever feature of the formula they devised is that after you account for travel time, the gold per minute is almost exactly equal in both cases. Just to give you a rough sense for a trade route spanning each percentage of the length of the side of the map, here's the ideal gold income over time based on the market formula that the game is using. Obviously, with bumping, buildings, and other obstructions, you never get something quite this good, but this is a starting point. Going back to caravanseries, though, this brings up an interesting question. On the face of it, it seems caravanserai would actually be more cost-efficient on smaller maps, as to get the full 20% boost along your entire trade route, you need to build far fewer of them than on a larger map. At the same time, on larger maps, you're probably having more allies who benefit. So let's play with some scenarios to give a sense of its effect size in various situations, and if building them is especially good on a small map, large maps, or if these two factors perfectly balance out. Let's start simply with the benefit of one caravanserai on a 2v2 map. 2v2 or medium-sized maps have 168 tile length along each side. Assuming your markets are on opposite sides against the edge of the map, that's 160 tiles each way per trip. At 1.5 tiles per second for a trade cart with caravan, that means doing the trip in around 213 seconds, which works out to a little over 26 gold per minute in an ideal situation. Now let's add one caravanserai in the middle of that route. 
For a distance of 20 tiles on each trip across the map, your cart is being sped up to 1.8 tiles per second, which is 20% faster than their regular speed. A bit of simple math suggests that should lead to about a 2.4% increase in gold generation over the long run. Now this is per trade cart, so if you have say 40 trade carts for example, that one caravance ride translates to about 25 extra gold per minute. In a very simplistic payback model, in total resources that implies a roughly 9 minute payback time, though wood is the fastest resource to collect, so this is probably underselling it. You also presumably have an ally who will start trading as well along the same route. So added together, you're probably being paid back every 5 minutes or so once your trade is up and running. Suddenly, their 50 stone cost isn't looking so bad, as once you both have trade going, you're getting quite possibly an extra 25 gold for each player per minute, as well as potentially healing and saving your cards from raids. So what if we continue this to the point we covered the entire trade route? 8 caravanserais should do the trick unless you have a very diagonal route, but keeping it simple, together those buildings would cost 1400 wood and 400 stone. With very few or ideally no obstructions on the route, doing similar math to before we get of course 20% more gold generated, which on a very good route nets you about 200 extra gold per minute, again paying back with 40 trade cards conservatively every 9 minutes. Again, even if stone is the main thing you're worried about, that's paid back in gold every 2 minutes or so, and actually in half that time if your ally is trading as well. Clearly on a medium sized map, the Caravanserai is a very solid investment, and of course this also stacks with other trade bonuses like Spanish and Bohemians. Given Caravanserais also affect allies, I would put this in a similar category as more of a team bonus than a Civ specific one. But now let's see if this scales and is true as well for a large map, which is the size you're automatically given in a 4v4. There are 220 tiles along each dimension, and with markets placed at exact opposite edges of the map, your route would be 424 tiles round trip, with 122 gold carried back each time. Notice again crunching the numbers, we get functionally the same 26 gold per minute with no obstructions. Now right away a single caravance ride this time is obviously going to have less impact. It's speeding the trade cards up for the same 20 tiles during each trip, but now that's proportionally a much smaller piece of the journey. Doing all of the same math again, on a 4v4 map, a single caravanserai only increases gold generation theoretically by about 1.7%, compared to 2.4% on a 2v2 map. Valuing all resources the same, this is now a 13 minute payback with 40 trade cards, whereas on the medium sized map it was a 9 minute payback, so that sounds significantly worse. That is, until you realize you could have up to 4 players benefiting on the large map eventually, and correcting for that, it's actually more like a 3 minute payback for the total resources invested. Of course you still need to walk the length of the map and build all of those buildings, but the point is once it's running, you're getting the resources back very regularly. Put together, that means it's actually even better to make one or more caravanserais on large maps with more players, even with the greater upfront investment, simply because more players can potentially benefit. Of course there is a limit to this, and if you play 4v4 on a ludicrous size map for example, playing weird settings, you'll actually dilute that positive effect. The short answer though is regardless of how many players are in the game, using an appropriately sized map, caravanserais have a very solid payback, and especially as you add more players and trade cards and consider the total impact for your team, they're absolutely worth trying to prioritize, even just for the extra gold income alone. In a fully covered trade route in a 4v4 game, you're looking at as much as 800 extra gold per minute for your team, and a functionally unrateable trade line from cavalry. So that's a deep dive of the relatively new building, and yet another reason Hindustanis are doing exceptionally well these days on the ladder, at least in team open maps. It's definitely a very good building to invest in for those long drawn out games. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.